today is Rat. Read Aloud Thursday. Today for Read Aloud Thursday, we are going to continue our book, Abraham Lincoln, The Great Emancipator, and we are on chapter three, and it is called Grandfather and the Indians. So make sure you're paying close, atten close attention so you can answer those questions that are in the description box. One rainy day, Mother Nancy Lincoln was spinning wool. Sarah and Abe were watching her. They loved to watch Mother spin. They loved to watch the great wheel go round and round. They loved to see the spindle turn. Mother, said Abe, I would rather watch you spin than do anything else. So would I, said Sarah. Miss Lincoln laughed. I know something that both of you would much rather do, she said. You would much rather listen to your father tell some of his stories. Sarah and Abe didn't know what to say. They did love to hear father tell stories. Mother laughed again. That's all right, children, she said. There isn't anyone who can tell stories as well as your father. The neighbors all say that, and you know they come to visit us sometimes just to hear him. I know they do, said Sarah proudly. I'm going to tell stories too when I'm a man, said Abe. Just then the door was opened quickly, and in came Father Thomas Lincoln with a gust of wind and rain. He was dripping wet. His clothes, his coonskin cap, his deerskin moccasins. This is a bad storm, he said. I can't work in the field, and I can't work in the woods. I can't even hunt or fish. It will give you a chance to rest, said Miss Lincoln. Sarah, take your father's wet cap. Abe, you take his moccasins. Sarah hung the dripping cap on a peg in the wall across the room from the fireplace. Abe put the dripping moccasins in a corner that was not too near the fireplace. Mr. Lincoln was pleased. I see you children know how to take care of skins as well as little Indians do. He sat on the fireside bench as soon as his wet clothes began to dry. Would you like to hear a story, children? he asked. Yes, yes, cried Sarah and Abe. Bring up your stools and I'll tell you a true story. It's about your grandfather, Abraham Lincoln. That's my name too, said Abe. You were named after him, said Mr. Lincoln, and I hope one day you grow up to be as brave as him. Wasn't he afraid of anything, Abe asked? Nothing, said Father, not even Indians. He was a soldier in the Indian War. Did he wear a blue coat with brass buttons, asked Sarah. Indeed he did, Father said. He was the captain of his company, and he helped to drive the Indians out of these woods. Never forget that, children, said Mother, and always be good to soldiers. What could I do for a soldier, Abe asked. You could show respect by taking off your cap when you meet one, said Father. You could get him a drink of water, said Mother, and even give him some food. What do soldiers eat, Sarah asked. Anything they can get, said Father, and plenty of it. Mother laughed. The children laughed. Then Father said, Abe, throw a log on the fire and I'll tell you to a story. Now Abe was only seven years old, but he lifted a log and put it in the fireplace. Isn't Abe strong, said Sarah? I like to be strong, Abe said. I can help Father in the field. Father nodded, just as I helped my father when I was a little boy. In fact, that is part of my story. You see, children, my father was a farmer just as I am. Only he owned more land and horses and cows than I do. We own horses, said Abe. We own cows, said Sarah, and calves. Not half as many as my father had, said Mr. Lincoln, and he owned more than 2,000 acres of land. He must have been rich, said Sarah. No, Sarah, he wasn't rich. He worked in his fields all day, every day, and my brothers and I worked right along with him. One spring morning, when I was about six years old, he took me to a cornfield that was close to the woods. Were there Indians in the woods? asked Abe. There had been, but Father thought they would never return. The soldiers had built a fort near a farm, so we felt quite safe. Father stood there and looked over the field. Too many weeds, he said. We'll pull them, Thomas. He stooped over, but he didn't pull a single weed. Something terrible happened. What, what, cried Sarah and Abe. I heard a shot, and I saw my father fall. 
He didn't speak again. Indians, said Abe. Indians, said Sarah. Yes, said Father, Indians. They were hiding in the woods, waiting for Father to come out of the cornfield. Poor Grandfather, said Sarah. <clears throat> that wasn't all, children. They tried to get me, too. You, cried the children. An Indian ran out of the woods and seized me. He began to drag me out to the field. Oh, cried Sarah and Ain. I was frightened nearly to death. I thought I would never see my mother again. Poor little boy, said Miss Lincoln. We were now at the edge of the field. Another step or two and the Indians would have had me in the woods. But again something happened. I heard another shot and I saw the Indian fall. He didn't speak or move. Who shot him? asked Abe. My oldest brother, and he was only twelve. He shot from our cabin door. But he might have hit you instead of the Indian, said Abe. The Indian had a hold of you when your brother fired. He had to take the chance, said Mr. Lincoln. My second brother had run to the fort for the soldiers. My mother could see the Indians in the woods, and she was afraid I wouldn't reach the cabin alive. By that time, the soldiers had come. They drove the Indians out of the woods, and they never returned. I'm sorry about Grandfather, said Abe, but I'm glad that Indian didn't get you. Chapter 4 Sarah and Abe go fishing. Mother, asked Abe, do you need any more wood? No, Abe, said Miss Lincoln, you have brought all I need today. Do you need any more water? Miss Lincoln looked at the water buckets. Why, they are all full, she said. You must have worked pretty fast, Abe. I'd like to go fishing, Mother. You have earned it, my dear boy. You may go, and you may stay all afternoon. I want to go too, said Sarah. No, said Mother, you aren't old enough. I'm older than Abe, said Sarah. I'm two years older. But Abe is larger and stronger, and he knows how to take care of himself. I'll take care of her, said Abe. I won't let her go near the deep water. Very well, then. Go along, children. The children ran all the way to the creek. They had no fishing poles or lines or hooks, but they knew just what to do. They found a place where the creek was shallow. They stooped over and held their hands in the water. Don't let them slip through your hands, said Abe. Fish are slippery. Then they waited and waited and waited. Their arms ached and their, ne and their necks and backs ached. But still they, st they stooped and waited. Let's go home, Sarah said at last. Not yet, said Abe. You can play on the bank, Sarah. And Abe went on fishing. Sarah found some acorns under a great oak tree. So for a long time, she was very busy. She made acorn cups and saucers. She made an acorn sugar bowl and a cream pitcher. She made acorn bowls for berries and mush. Then she played she was drinking sassafras tea from the cups. She used play cream and play sugar. She ate a bowl of play mush and a bowl of play berry berries. Now she was tired of playing. Abe, she cried. Let's go home. Not yet, Abe said. Wait. And Abe went on fishing. Sarah looked about for something else to do. Her keen eyes found some wild grapes high on a tree. The vine grew so close to a giant tree and had fastened itself around it. It was almost as strong as a tree and as large around as Abe's arm. So up that vine went Sarah, just like a little squirrel. Then she sat in a crook of the vine and ate grapes until she couldn't eat another. Come on, Abe, she cried at last. Let's go home. Not yet, said Abe. Wait. And Abe went on fishing. Sarah swung herself to the ground. Nearby was a mother robin feeding a young robin. Sarah thought it would be fun to count the worms it ate. So she sat on a log, leaned against a tree, and began to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sarah's dark eyes closed. Sarah's brown head nodded. Sarah was asleep. And Abe went on fishing. Sarah didn't know she went to sleep. She didn't know how long she slept. But she did know that someone was shaking her. She opened her eyes, and there was Abe by her side. Look, he said, I've caught a fish. 
It isn't very large, said Sarah. No, but it's a fish, said Abe, and that's what I was fishing for. You are a long time, said Sarah. I don't care. I caught it, said Abe. Now we'll go home. Then Sarah and Abe started home. They went through the woods between the great, great trees. As they walked along the narrow path, they talked and talked and talked. They weren't talking about bears or wildcats or snakes. No, indeed. They didn't even think of bears, and they didn't think of wildcats or snakes. They talked about Abe's fish. It was his first fish, and he caught it with his hands. He was so proud of that, and he had a right to be proud. Sarah had tried to catch a fish with her hands. She knew how hard it was. Isn't your back tired, Abe? she asked. You had to lean over the water so long. Yes, said Abe, but I don't care. I was determined to catch a fish. Mother will be glad to have it. She will fry it for our supper. Just then, they heard a voice. Someone called, Wait, children. The children turned. A strange man was coming toward them. He was smiling and waving his hand. I want to talk with you, he called. I have been alone in this forest all day, and I'm lonesome. Abe's gray eyes opened wide. The man wore a blue coat with brass buttons. Abe's hat came off quickly. Oh, he said, you are a soldier. Yes, said the man, I'm a soldier. I've been out fighting Indians. Indians, gasped Sarah. Do you think they will come to our cabin? You needn't be afraid, said the man. They are far away from here. Can't I get you a drink of clear cold water, asked, asked Abe. Thank you, but I found a spring on the hill and I drank enough for a week. Then the soldier laughed and Abe and Sarah laughed too. Can't I get you something to eat, asked Abe next. I wish you could, said the soldier. I'm hungry. Can't you come home with us to supper, Sarah asked. Mother would be very glad to have you. So would father, said Abe. His father was a soldier, too. Thank you both, but I must go on. I'll try to get supper somewhere where I can camp for the night. I'll find some berries or some grapes. Take my fish, sir. You could cook it for supper. No, no, my boy. Why, that's the only fish you have. Please take it, sir. I want to do something for you. Why, the man asked. Because you are a soldier, Abe said. Bless your kind heart, the man said. Yes, I'll take your fish, and I'll fry it for my supper. And thanks to you, little boy, many thanks. I want to be kind to all soldiers, said Abe. I hope you will be, said the man, always as long as you live. And that's where we're going to stop, and we will pick up next week.